you know, there's some really, really dangerous fighters in this tournament and to be sat at the top in such a nice position right now, it's a dream come true, really. My name is Nick Nagarko and you are locked into Culture TV. For the culture, by the culture. Let's go. Brendan, how's it going, bro? It's good, mate. It's a shame that I can't be there, but, uh, you know... Where are you? LA will do. LA will do <laughs> Nice. How long are you there for? Uh, just till the end of this tournament now, so the end's in October 27th. Right. And then I'll be back to money. Weren't you, weren't you in Dubai last week? <laughs> Fucking mate. It's been some journey. It's been like that, mate. Everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, I'm in the sunshine. That's all that matters. How's the training going? Good, mate. Yeah, good, good, good. I mean, it's non-stop, really, because it's a tournament and fighting so many times. It's just consistent training and fighting, so that's how I prefer it, to be honest. Are you feeling good? Always. Yeah. Yeah, mate, always. So, the last one was with Tyler Diamond, right? Yeah. Talk to me about that fight, bro. Um, he's a bit of a fucking zombie, really. I mean, I've never really fought anyone that's took that kind of punishment and kept coming back. So, yeah, just shows that there's, there's guys out there with resolve that you wouldn't believe, mate, and chins that you wouldn't believe. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a different kind of fight. He just was just denied him, really. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> he kept coming forward, which was mad. I've never had anyone take that kind of punishment and keep stepping forward. So it's a bit of a lesson, really, that there's, there's some good guys out there that are tough as fuck. Yeah. I like, you know what I like though, Brendan, I like the way you, the way you just, like in your post-fight interview, like the way you just, you took that so, you took the win so humbly, um, I think, and then the respect that you showed to my man, I think that, that was, that was impressive, bro. Yeah, because we talked a lot about sh sh shit back and forward, and I thought I was going to wipe him out, I really did, I thought, you're not on my level, I'm going <laughs> to go in there, I'm going to put you to bed, and move on to the next guy, but just didn't happen like that and I thought you know what gained so much more respect for you um, and your skills really so that's what happens sometimes when you fight someone yeah. I can't really explain to you what it's like to, to share a cage with another man for 15 minutes take all his best shots he takes all your best shots and you kind of look at each other at the end like Fuck. it's a weird kind of respect you get for that person for the rest yeah. of your life yeah it's been, a, it's been a mad journey for you hasn't it bro to this point now yeah, it's been been ups, been downs, but I'm riding a massive high right now. Fucking buzzing with it. How, how, so how long have you been fighting for now? I started when I was 16, 17. 2008 was my first fight. And then, fucking hell, mate, we're still here now. What, 2021? Yeah. It's a hot minute, 13, 14 years or something. 14 yeah. years, 13, hard work, loads of, travelled to loads of countries, met some amazing people. Did stuff that I would never be able to do if I'd have just stayed on the estate doing fuck all. So, you know, <laughs> people say fighting's dangerous and you're not worried about your health. And yeah, but I'd be more worried about my health sat on the estate, mate, doing nothing. So, <laughs> I mean... <clears throat> exactly, bro. And at least you're doing something positive. Do you know what I mean? So, so at the minute, you're currently kind of like sitting at the top of the PFL, really, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in a dream spot right now. You know, there's some really, really dangerous fighters in this tournament and to be sat at the top in such a nice position right now, it's a dream come true, really. How did you feel about... What's your, what's your feeling on, on the UFC now? Because I know that, like, a lot of people are saying that you should have been there, but Dana White didn't take you in. What's your, what's your feelings on that now? Well, back in 2012, I already fought in the UFC. I fought on a main card and yeah. I've got the gloves on my wall now. And like, no one can take it away from me that I was the first person from Manchester to ever fight in the UFC. Yeah. Um, that's something that no one will ever take away. Now I'm about making dough. I'm about making dough, cementing my legacy. I'm getting at least five times as much as I would get in the UFC right now for PFL. If I wanted to earn a million dollars in the UFC, it would probably take me five years six years, seven years maybe. With the PFL, I can do it in six months. It's on ESPN. It's the same channel as the UFC. So, like, I've got all the benefits of the UFC really now with this organisation, so it's good. Yeah. So, do you know, with the whole... 
with the whole Dana White situation, how did, did that impact you mentally at all with your career? Or what, did you just like brush that off and just crack on? Well, it lit a fire under my ass, didn't it? Because since then, mate, I've just been plowing through people, really. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah there, was, there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that like that we won't really go into, but there's, there's a lot more to that decision. Um, but Than what you said publicly? With what? There's a lot more to the decision than what you said publicly is what is what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's this there's stuff that, you know, my bridges aren't burnt with the UFC though. My contract I'm a free agent at the end of this year. At the end of this tournament, I'm a free agent. So we could go anywhere. Um I'm on a seven fight win streak now. Fucking twenty one and three as a pro, which is in the UK with up there with me till Venom Page. There's only a few that have got that kind of record anyway. Yeah. Um, and my three losses are all decisions. They're all close fights against good guys. So I'm in a good position now to solidify myself in MMA, my legacy, Manchester, Lawless. I uh, bring a lot to the table now as well. So yeah, man. first goal is get this million dollars. Yeah. And that's the first one. That's only two fights away. That's in the foreseeable. And after that, who knows? Yeah. Now that, that I think I think that that's that's in the bag that that's in the bag that still two good fights left two good fighters left to fight but I've not seen anything special in there I've not seen anyone where I think wow you're scary I've really not who is your next fight with find out tonight they're both fighting tonight and then I find out I'll watch it tonight on telly and then I'll be the guy right <clears throat> and if, does it for the two fighters that they could be, who you could be facing next, have, have you, is there any fear or is there any like, I'd rather this guy than this guy? There's still there's still five potential people, believe it or not. Okay. There's still five potential opponents. It could be, it could be Bubba Jenkins, Chris Wade. It could be Lance Palmer, Movlead, or I can't remember the other guy's name, but yeah, there's, there's five potentials and each one of them, yeah. Poses a different threat. You got a wrestler, you got a striker, or you got a guy that's endurable. Like, there's just so many different variables that it doesn't really matter, mate. Honestly, I don't care. Like with PFL, what's good about PFL is there's no ducking and diving. You can't dodge opponents. Yeah. Wherever, whoever wins this fight, I'm going to fight. Whereas in the UFC, what happens is I'm in Bellator, I want to see the ring you and go, right, nine weeks' time, you want to fight, blah, blah. And you can say no. You can say, nah, I'll choose a different guy. And like, there's ways of like avoiding the better people. And the main reason I did want to go PFL is because there's no avoiding no one. You get there's what you give good it. fighters and get the bag. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. the goal. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about your training regime. Like, what, 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 what have you got to do to stay in this kind of condition and to keep yourself at, at sort of at, in premium fitness? Well, it's. Um, it varies. We have something called peaking. And what peaking means is you'll train at a certain level and then you'll 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 up the mountain before the fight. And then a week before the fight, you'll come down. And the idea is that you've got this energy to go back there now. Um, right. Usually I get it right. Sometimes I don't. It's really difficult when you're fighting so many times so close together with injuries, yeah. with peaking going up and down and do I train hard in between these two fights or do I chill yeah. a bit this is something new to me I've never had to fight this many times in short succession so it's, I'm that's learning what I mean, as I go along you kind of got your recovery time but then you've got to train for the next fight so it's, so it's quite a lot to balance really isn't it double edged sword mate do you overtrain into the next one or do you rest loads until the next one so I've not figured it out yet but I'm doing my best <laughs> what about diet and that um, wow, well, I actually weighed myself yesterday and I was like, fucking hell, Brendan, sort your life out. It's been chilling for the last two weeks. I'm not fighting again for another two, two and a half months. So, um, just getting back into that now. I'm actually going to Wildcard, no Wildcard in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Road to the gym. I'm heading over there in the next hour or so. Um, that's been shut now for a couple of months. So, I'm glad that's back open. I'm going there in a box. So, yeah, I'll just be ticking over now and then I'll probably bring it up again mid July. Yeah. And then that'll get me ready for August. <clears throat> Amazing. Sick. So um speaking of like Manchester fighters, what, what are you thinking of the whole Fiori Wilder scenario? 
I love Tyson Fury, mate. He's our idol, isn't he? You know, he's from Manchester, he's, from, he's our idol. He's like our poster boy. A um, little bit worried about the fight. I would oh, yeah. definitely, I would have gone straight to Joshua. Yeah. But he's like, fuck it, I'll just beat him again. He's that confident in himself. So hopefully that's what happens. What, why are you a little bit worried? Because with, with Wilder, mate, he took that loss. And he spent, how long has it been? Two years or a year and a half just sat there focusing on Tyson Fury and the rematch. And I feel like Fury's been focusing on Joshua. And now this just creeped out, creeped out of nowhere. Like you're fighting Wilder again and it was a bit rushed. And I don't know, we'll see. And they're very different fighters, aren't they? Very different. Who? Uh, Wilder and Joshua? Yeah. Wild, wild, both, well, wild, wild as wild, lives up to his name, and Joshua's a bit more conventional, but I think, in boxing-wise, Fiora's the best by a mile. Yeah. Yeah, by a mile. By a mile. I think, the, I feel, I think, like, obviously, a lot of people think that, you know, Fiori would just walk through AJ, but I am kind of feel the same, that Wild has had a long time to think about this Fiori fight. He's had a long time to, to, to study it, to study him, to look at everything that he's doing. Two years is a long time to study one person who's who's basically shattered your dreams. So, yeah. That's my thoughts. That's yeah. my thoughts. And he's coming in hungrier than ever. Yeah. Fury just, because he beat him so easily the second time, I was probably just thinking, yeah, it's just another walk in the park, this. But I just think we're going to get a different animal in uh, Wilder this time. Yeah. How often are you back in Manchester? I've not been in Manchester since September last year. Really? Yeah, which is a shame because I went on a stag do, mate, in, in September last year. In and, Manchester? And, yeah, I was in Manchester and then 50, <clears throat> 52 of us went on a stag do to Dubai. And then I, I just ended up staying because the UK went into lockdown. I've got friends that train in Dubai. I know the, the owner of TK MMA, so I ended up getting a good little camp out there. I've trained for my first PFL fight, flew to the States. And I've been in the States ever since and I'm going to be here till October. Have you had any problems? With, have you had any problems with traveling? Not one, no. Nah. Nah. I've got a work visa though. I've got a work visa for the States. I've got a five year work visa so I can get in and out. I've got a five year work visa. Well, I've got, I had a one year work visa for the States and they won't let me fly on it. It's crazy. P1. A P1, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna let me fly on it. Maybe it was because I'd been in Dubai for six months and then that's flew from is. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that's what it is. You've got, you can't go because UK is on the travel ban, isn't it? So, and, and we're all of Europe is. So you can't fly from the UK. So you've got to be in Dubai for X amount of time and then. And Even then with a P1, States. yeah. Even with a P1, bro. Yeah. Because that's oh, it's interesting. Me interesting. Me that, because I went to Mexico me the other day, like over the border, just to nip over because I live right on the border. And then as I was coming back, they were being funny, like, yeah, well, nah, no, we're not letting UK pass. So I was like, are you fucking mad? I'm in Mexico, mate. You're not leaving me in Tijuana. <laughs> that embassy interview is like, it's horrible, isn't it? That US embassy interview. Yeah, but this is my third P1 now, so they're a bit more relaxed. <clears throat> it's peak though, isn't it, when they take you in that little room and start asking you asking you bare questions. They want to know everything. Yeah, in detail. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, anything you've ever done, mate, is getting scrutinised. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Now, I'm glad you managed to get out of there. That's brilliant, man. And you're thinking to get back here in October? Well, I'm going to stay for the remainder of the tournament. PFL have said, right, listen, you can't leave the country while this tournament's on. Yeah. Because if they lock the borders again, you're out the tournament. Uh, so I've just kind of based up between San Diego and LA on, the, on this West Coast. I've been coming out here for about eight years on and off go to the same gym. So I know everyone and comfortable here, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have they made you take the vaccine? Nah. No. Well, that's good. No, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't want to take that, but I guess we're all going to have to take it at some point, but I really don't want to take it. It's a weird one, isn't it? Because I think, like, I f my my personal opinion is, is like now, have you, have you seen on the news, it's now double jab to fly. you got to have two, well, you, the UK is saying you need to have two jabs before you can fly. And I just think eventually it'll, it'll be a case that you can't do anything without it. Even going Tesco. 
I agree. That's that's on its that's on its way in. I can sense that myself. They're slowly bringing in. Oh, you need this for the vaccine. You need that for the vaccine. And I just think, fucking hell, mate, it's only a matter of time before the jabbing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I've not had mine yet, but I know I'm going to give in and do it. We're going to have to. You're going to have to, yeah. If you like me, you like to travel. Yeah. You're not taking my livelihood away just for a vaccine, mate. So no, what can I do? Exactly. And the thing is, like, vaccines have been around for like hundreds of years. Do you know what I mean? We have, but it's so it just all feels a bit weird, doesn't it? Because the way they've rolled this out so quickly, the way this virus just come out of nowhere, it all it, it all feels a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Listen, we're from we're from Manchester, and the old saying is "smell a rat." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Something going on, mate. Exactly, exactly. So another thing I wanted to ask you: What do you think about all these YouTubers getting into boxing at the minute? I'm not mad with it. They're making money. Who cares? They're winning fights. Everyone's like, oh yeah, but they're not real fighters. They're bringing the sport down. Uh, so what, mate? You've got to move into times. What's the point in sitting around moaning about a fucking YouTuber winning a boxing match, mate? Like, crack on with your own shit. Like, all these fighters moaning that they're getting paid more than them and all that. So what? Like, they built up their audience elsewhere and brought it to the sport. If anything, they're helping us get paid more by bringing more eyes to fighting. Exactly. That's my thoughts. I mean, I'm not a big fan of like Logan Paul or anything, but you can't deny he's he's turning heads to the sport, like thousands of them. So, I mean, I think whether... I am a bit worried about Woodley, mate, to be honest. I'm a bit right. worried about Woodley fighting that other fella. I just don't know, I'm just talking about Woodley. He was 39 years old, lost his last five fights, not even won a round. He's fighting this young kid who's giving it out big time who's a boxer <laughs> Woodley's not a boxer and I just think fucking hell if he beats a UFC champion as well former yeah we're never going to hear the end of it did you see the lot did you see the Logan Mayweather fight yeah, yeah. he did well better than I thought he would do. I thought he did he stood up I thought he did great yeah <clears throat> he's about twice the size of him now and the rest yeah <laughs> but he he did all right, mate. He moved, he had footwork, he could throw shots, he did gas out. Yeah. Fair play. And it's Mayweather. Do you know what I mean? It's not some amateur, it's Mayweather. So you kind of, I'm not a big fan of his, but I think you've kind of got to respect what he did because he, he held he held his own, didn't he? So did fantastic, mate. And, you know, landed some shots on Mayweather. Yeah. Like, no one can take that away from him. What do you think? What do you think about uh, Logan and Tommy Fury? Do you think that'll happen? That's a good one. That that's a good one because you got two guys that are actually trying to box and make that a career. So I think that would be a that'll be a great fight. I think that'll be a really good step up for for both guys. Who would your money be on? <clears throat> I've not seen them together size wise. Any similar weights? They look similar weights. They look similar. Yeah, I'd say Tommy. I'd say Tommy. He's come from a fighting family. He's boxed most of his life. I'd say it's on me, mate, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I would. So you've got your next fight in August, right? Yeah. And then so you've got two more in two more within this league. I've got two more contracted fights. I win this one, I win the next one, I'm a world champion and a millionaire. And right now that's the fucking that's the goal, mate. That's what I go to sleep at night. Right, Brendan man, I've written. I really, really, really hope that that it happens for you, bro. And I, I'm sure it will do, man. I'm sure it will. It can't, it can't, it can't not meet the amount of fucking work I've put into the sport and sacrifice and everything that I've done to get to this point, mate. It can't not work out, and I won't let it not work out. Like no matter what happens in the fights, these guys are gonna have to kill me, mate. <laughs> I seen that with Tyler Diamond, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seen that. I think a lot of people seen that. You have to go to a totally different place in your mind, like when it gets hard. And these guys aren't willing to go to the to, to as dark as I'm willing to go. And I know that <laughs> I've seen them all. And I've looked them in the eyes and I've told them, "You're all getting it." Like me and Bubba are banter back and forward and that. And the other ones, I just don't give them. I'm just cold as ice, mate. They're trying to take food off my table. That's how I look at it. Mm. Exactly. Well, you got the whole of Manchester behind you, bro. So um, really hope it comes out. It will, mate. Thank you for the support. And you know what? I miss back home, man. I miss being at home. I miss the boys. I miss all that. But I'm on this little journey now. Yeah. And 
once it's once it's sorted out, once we've handled business, I'll be back, mate. I can't wait. And we'll, we'll, we'll come into the studio next time, dude. Probably. Yeah, definitely, bro. That'll be sick. Be much better. Yeah, man. Nice one, Brendan. Thank you so much, bro. No worries. I loved it, mate. Take care. Big love, bro. Top man. Take care, bro.